um, welcome everyone uh, to another video about developing the HopperNet protocol. Today we're going to take a look about how do we improve the documentation. So our documentation is based in docs.hoppernet.org. Uh, in general, we, we provide much of the context about the project, what Hopper is about, how to run some nodes, what to do with it, how to fund some of the nodes. And this is all maintained within our HopperNet repository, right? So in case you, let's say you find something that maybe you don't want to, uh, that it's, there's an error in documentation or you want, you think that there are some ways that we can improve that. Today, we're gonna take a look about how to first find issues related to the documentation and second, how do we actually solve them within the Hopper Net repository. So uh, first things first, if there is any issue about the documentation, we probably have it labeled uh, with the documentation label. So within the Hopper Net protocol, you can find there's some labels that are prefixed with a P, that P refers to a package. And if you click on them, you will see that there's some particular documentation issues that are might be pending, right? So some of them are generated or automatically generating or API, maybe a change log, hosting the documentation ourselves. Um, but let's say there's something that is particularly delivered in a, in a closed milestone that we need to do, right? So in this case, uh, we can click on this one and say, okay, there's some improvements on the existing documentation based on a new interview that we did. Here we showcase what needs to be done in this particular issue. So we'll get it started and, and take a look about how to do that. As we have done in some examples in the past, we can click our little um, use GitHub as part of our connection process that allows you to bootstrap to a working instance. So in this case, if you don't have a working development environment that it's not ready for development, you can just use it and develop directly into the browser. So we're gonna walk through on how to run the documentation, particularly from, from the very beginning to actually getting um, a PR up and running, right? So you will see that uh, as we have seen in some examples in the past, um, the moment you kickstart the, the Git uh, container, it will automatically already install some of the already pre-existing packages uh, just to make sure that all your dependencies are installed in your container. This is something you need to do um, every time because um, unless you have already a working station, and you need some particular dependencies to get the project up and running, right? So the best thing you can just do here right now is just take a look and wait. Um, the documentation, as we as I mentioned there, our project is divided by packages. So if you go here uh, into the packages, you will see all the particular components that make the Hopper project. But for docs, we actually have a, a specific area that is called um, just docs and Hopper documentation. So we have a readme over there that probably uh, just provides you some very basic instructions on how to, to build uh, the project locally. And we also have a make file, right? So in Node.js, it's very common to have a packageation that gives you pretty much a little bit of context, how to run some of the um, dependencies and how to structure the project. With a make file, you have um, something that allows you to actually do the same, but just use make, right? Which is a, a, a very common build system. So let's navigate here with our, um, let's just go to the terminal. Let's navigate here um, directly into our docs, into the docs folder, and let's just uh, run um, a make file, right? So we're gonna be needing some dependencies that are probably in Python, but just for, for the sake of seeing what some errors might come up, let's just do it and run directly uh, make live HTML, right? So in this case, let's see, oh, Think we might need to do some some build oh yeah so you said like make sure you have things things installed so as it says on the readme you need to uh, make sure that you install things so let's see if we first of all which python we have so one of the nice things is oh we already have python um but one of the things that we have um oh it's not, not the way to get a the python version but at least we know that it's python 3. so for instance let's just copy and install Sphinx, and that should um, get us started, right? So now we're installing the particular dependencies for, for Python, um, for, for Sphinx, sorry, and then we can give it another try. So Sphinx auto build. So we might need to also do something such as uh, auto build. I'm not 100% sure whether that is actually the right command. Well, apparently it is. So we can get it started already and add some some improvements to the documentation. Let me just remove this. So, yeah, so it, they on on Markdown, if you just use um, single numbers, you don't have to keep track of the notation. So that is just something to simplify things. 
and I will say, okay, pip uh, install uh, use things auto build, right? So one of the things that is really nice about, um, yeah, that's the one. One of the things that is really nice about being able to work on, on a contributing software like open source is that you can um, do these kind of small improvements that are already built on top of those, right? So in this case, let's say, um, oh, you can see that even I'm able to comment on, on the GitHub tickets here. This is a particular Chrome extension, uh, sorry, be, um, Visual Code extension that I have over here. It's called KitLens and allows me to do a few of these things. Um, so you can see here, for instance, um, that I'm able to, that I just did these improvements and I changed a few things here, right? So uh, let me see if I can this actually uh, install a few things here. So let me actually add instead um, develop locally, and then you can just do install this one. So that way, if you only want to build it locally, you can just run the files. But if you want to develop locally, you need to use um, Sphinx of the build, right? So now let's take a look at the um, Git interface. So you can already see that there's a few changes here. It provides a really nice, um, a really nice diff interface for me to actually work on on that uh, to showcase what are the difference. Now I'm I'm not very much of a UI guy to be honest. Um, so I'm more of like a terminal person. So I can see one of the changes are here as well. My terminal. So I'm just gonna do it briefly check which branch I am. So this is this is already tackling some of the things here. So I'm just gonna do commit. Uh, we're use semantic um, commits, but uh, so just make sure that you know you provide some prefixes on some of the, the commits. This is not something we are necessarily enforcing in the project, but it's something that is nice anyway moving forward that we might automatically generate a change log based on this. So in this case, this is just something completely in the docs, and I say it added instructions on how to auto build um, and docs, pretty much. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's also important. Um, actually, this this is a, this is an example of a bad, bad commit because it doesn't like I already know what you're doing. But the important part of it is why we're doing it, right? So, in this case, uh, let's say why we're doing this is like included um, auto build for developing the docs. So this may be more useful because the what has been doing is actually been shown on the on the Git description, whereas uh, why we're doing it it's actually more important in terms of the commit. So we have already this branch, uh, sorry, this um, this little branch over here that it, we're already ranking some changes and we're already some some saying some things uh, here that we can already improve on. So let's go here and particularly let's take a look at the issue. Um, oh, actually, let's complete this cycle and then let's say we were doing make. Maybe five HTML. This should be working, and because it's doing locally, you will see that you could already uh, identify that we are open um, service and a port. So it will show me like, aha, something's not working. Ah, okay, so something is apparently not working. Uh, with the constraints are no longer some documentation, and let's see what it's complaining about. Right, so it says there's probably around your configuration. Run as things. There's something wrong with the configuration that allows not no module name. Aha! So again, we didn't follow the we didn't follow the actual limitations here, right? So we probably need not only things, but we need actually a bunch of other things. So let's just make sure that I actually install everything that is needed. Um, as you can see, my <laughs> Python is not necessarily my 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 forte here, so I just fail completely to install all the basic documentation here. Let's give another try. Uh, let's see if this actually works now. This time there seems to not be any errors now. Let's give it a try. Let's refresh here directly already have open and voila. So now we have the documentation uh, up and running locally and we can already see some of the, the, the similarities between our actual documentation. Now, some of the things that are important is that um, we are hosting, currently we're hosting the documentation on read the docs. So that allows us to give some kind of like needs, need, um, need features such as uh, showcasing particular branches. In this particular case, we're only showing the, the latest version, so nothing fancy there. But you will see that that's why, for instance, it doesn't show here latest, uh, which is something we can quickly change. For now, let's tackle the, the, the issue on, on itself and let's go quickly on these particular topics, right? So let's say adding label recommended to the hover section within the developer section, right? So let's say there is a developer section here that it says um, start here. Actually, that was, huh, right. So for instance, when you're installing 
here what it will say is we should add like a label that says um, recommended here. So that is the way that we recommend people to install things because the script is the easiest way to get that thing sorted out. So let's do that. Uh, let's now, because I have no idea how to do that. I'm just gonna, where that is located, I'm just gonna um, just use the my handy uh, file explorer uh, finder. Um, I could also be, I'm a little bit of a crap guy as well. So honestly, it can be, might be a little bit easier to do. Don't have proper documentation and I wanna do hopper sh. Oh, wait a second, why not? Oh, never mind. Um, I see, I'm a crap guy and I don't know the syntaxes. Let's do this here. Okay. Um, we want to actually probably just automate script label. So you know what? Let's just do that. Um, I'm actually not sure whether you have to escape colon. Hmm. Do you have to escape colon on? Huh, that actually was not useful at all. You know what? Maybe we'll have to use the the actual. Okay. Now you pick my interest. So let's take a look at the grip thing. All right. So so this is funky, right? Um, because we are using Markdown. And this is a this is a link. Wait, where was that? Yeah. So this is a link. Uh, this is probably um, it's not exactly like this, but instead, oh, you can find it here. So it's over here. So it was install Hopper Hopper documentation, install Hopper index MD, um, installing Hopper. It was probably given here, but yeah. Anyway, oh, let me just close the actual documentation. Well, we can take a look later, but for now we can see it here, and you can see now that it's actually the right place. So in this case, let's add a small label that says recommended, right? And then let's give it a, take a look at that. Now let's see if it actually auto builds. So the whole point is that when we do changes, we don't need to necessarily tell Sphinx to build it again. Let's look at this. I actually don't know where it should refresh it automatically, but I guess it didn't. So you can see now these changes. Now that doesn't look necessarily strong enough. So luckily we're using, um, um, markdown so we can let's say add some styling here and that should be pretty much it yeah it is actually automatically building I don't know why I'm, I'm why I didn't at the very beginning I guess it just takes a little bit of time um, to refresh some things but yeah I think yeah there you go so that that looks a little bit better that's pretty much exactly it so again let's just try and be very very granular with our particular commits so let's say in this case again let's use docs um, it probably will be useful to say if we have multiple issues to tag the issue so we can say something like fixes uh, eight. Um, but yeah it, it doesn't fix the entire thing but I will I could it could I, I can just link it anyway on the git commit just to have a little bit of track on that what I'm particularly trying to do here so in this case uh, we're adding uh, making sure people use hover sage or other install methods so yeah Again, why we're doing this thing. Um, and then we can already actually just push this branch. So let's just push this branch already. You will see that Git is actually uh, handing out that it give me a click already, um, a link to actually create a pull request uh, from directly from either VS um, um, Code really within here, or if I wanted to actually create it, um, within github i can just continue and use the github interface i'm more familiar with github so i'm just going to go ahead and do it but if you uh, like to live within the world of vs code within here it's perfectly fine so let's do that here i'm just going to do and say okay uh improvements on documentation and i will say fixes uh 145 just make sure that is the right one now this of course is not ready um so it will be good to create it as a draft pull request and the issue and the reason why this is useful to to create it like this is because that way my team can already see what i'm currently working on right so it's nobody is going to merge it and nobody and everybody knows that I, or understand that this is actually something that i'm doing as a work in progress but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's how uh, you can start loopily and slowly chipping out the documentation. Um, for the time being, I'm gonna leave that here so the video is not too long. But yeah, that's pretty much the, the way you do it. You can have this uh, previewed locally, you can run this uh, locally on your own computer. And you know, whenever that is, is, is merged, uh, it will actually create, a, uh, it will be pushed here on our latest documentation. So this is this is uh, actually a match on the master branch. So any changes that we 
do directly here on the master branch are going to be pushed directly here um which is fine for the time being but ideally we will split in the future maybe future versions or provide maybe a development preview version when on a, on a particular pr that is something maybe we'll have to do later but for the time being this is more than enough for just uh, doing some basic um, interaction anyway i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned a little bit about your documentation and how to improve it and please if you find some issues or yourself uh, I found some issues with the documentation, uh, please report it and if you think you can just fix it yourself, uh, run it locally, uh, follow these steps and then you can just create a PR and yeah, start contributing to the project. Thank you very much.